Hello and welcome. In this video we will see what is an action filter, next we will see the filter types that we can use, then we will do our implementation of a custom action filter and filter scopes is a very important topic and finally how to disable action filters. So let's move to what is an action filter? Web API allow us to add extra logic before and after action methods execution. We can do things like logging, exception handling, data validation, perform authentication and authorization and so on. And filters take form through attributes that can be applied on our action methods. Let's move to the next topic, filter types. We have this table where we have the filter types the interface, the class and a description. The first one is simple filter where we have just a interface I filter. we have no classes of type simple filter and it just defines methods of a filter. It's very simple. The next one, the action filter, the main subject of this video, has a interface I action filter and a class action filter attribute. It adds extra logic before and after action execution. The next two, authentication filter and authorization filter, are mainly used for login purposes. I will not talk about them here because this is for another video about logging, okay? and authentication filter have an interface of i authentication filter doesn't have any class the authorization filter have an interface of i authorization filter and a class of authorization filter attribute the first one forces the user to be authenticated before an action to be executed and the second one, the authorization, allow or deny access to an action to a specific user or a group of users. The next one, exception filter, as an interface of I exception filter and a class of exception filter attribute. And the main goal of this filter is to handle an handled exceptions. If we have an uh, action method and inside of that action method we don't handle a specific exception, this filter is for that goal. Okay. And finally, we have the override filter where we have just an interface of i override filter and is used to customize behavior on other filters on a specific action. Let's move to the implementation. And for the implementation we have two options. The first one an interface i action filter and the second one extending a action filter attribute class. So we have two options. We will do the two implementations and let's do the code. In our Hello World project, we have here Action Filters Controller that I just created and is a simple, a very simple controller with two action methods. The first one get, the second one get to. Inside of it, it will just return action get from action filters controller. The second one do the same thing and also they trace here because I want to show in the output window of Visual Studio what is happening. So here in the code section, we will implement first the option of implement i action filter interface and the second option will be extend action filter attribute class let's start here by saying public class my action filter and we need to extend attribute because this is a attribute and we need to implement i action filter we will have to import system.web.http.filters. This is very important. Alert, important. This is not MVC, this is Web API. So we will use system.web.http.filters, not MVC. Okay. Then we need to import system because we have here the attribute and we need to implement i action filter and the methods are allow multiple that returns bool and execute action filter async that will return a task of http response message 
in the first one allow multiple we can just return true so we say true and this is for if we can use the filter in the same action method twice or more okay if this is false you can use just one time okay the next one let's make this more readable so let's put this in the next line these in the next line these in the next line and it's okay so we have here a parameter of HTTP action context, a cancellation token and a function of task of HTTP response message that is named as continuation. So if we go here, we can just, for example, var result is equals to continuation and we invoke this function and then we have to just wait for this. Okay, so here is what will happen before action method execution and here after the wait is what will happen after action method execution let's go here up and create a property for us to identify these filters so prop is a string and it will be named id okay and ctor for a constructor and we have a error of visual studio it's okay we receive a string let's name it n and we say that the id is equals to n okay is just that and then in our action execute action filter async we can say here let's say trace right line and we say ID for us to know what it is and we say before execution of and we need the name of the method we go here and say var action name is equals to action context dot action descriptor dot action name and with these we can go here and say the name of the action just like that this is before the execution just delete this comment and we go here we passed and we say after execution of action methods next we can just return because we have a error here because we return nothing and we need to return this so we just return the result and our first filter is done okay now let's move to the next and let me put this smaller let's do the next filter and we say public class my action filter 2 and it will extend action filter attribute and we will inside we will override public override a void method named on action executing okay so the first one on action executing and the second one is public override void on action executed the first one is for before the action method is executed and the second one is for after the action method is executed the first one receives a HTTP action context named action context the second one receives a HTTP action executed context named action executed context this is actually a wrapper for this one okay and the code inside the code inside we can go up to the first one and copy some code because we are lazy and we copy these and we go again to our methods and we paste here this is before the execution of our action method and this is for after the execution of our action method we are almost done we need to get from here the action context so we say action executed context dot action context with uppercase and we delete the old one and we are almost good almost good because we don't have this id we go up and copy the 
property and also the constructor paste here and we change the name of the constructor to be the constructor of this class and now we can use this let me copy this here and we go to our controller and we say that the first action method has this filter let's say this is the filter one and the second action method has the second filter my action filter two and this is the filter two okay now we can test we run this and we go to postman and we can get this and we get action get from action filter controller if we go here in the output console we have filter one before execution of get and inside action method get and filter one after execution of get okay if we go to the second one get to send the request we get the response here and here in the output console we have filter two before execution of get two and inside action method get to filter two after execution of get to just to remember option one we have to extend attribute and implement I action filter why extend attribute because my action filter is an attribute okay then we had to implement allow multiple in this case I said true it means that this attribute can be used more than one time in the same action method okay the next thing was implementing the execute action filter async and we do the before execution stuff here and the after execution stuff here okay and in between we have to invoke the continuation function this that we received in the parameters and then wait for the result and the second option we had to extend from action filter attribute and then we can use on action executing for the actions before our action method to be executed or we can use the on action executed for the actions after our action method to be executed okay is just that do you remember this table right and we just did this we implemented the interface i action filter and we used the class action filter attribute about filter scopes we have three levels of scopes the first one is the global level the second one is the controller level and the third is what we just saw in the examples action level the global level means that if we have a filter at global level it will be applied to all the action methods of our web api okay in the second the controller level if we apply a filter to the controller all the action methods from that controller will have that filter okay at action level it will be to a specific action method the one that have the filter so how this takes form we have this filter at action method level okay we can copy these and we can paste here right before our controller and we say that we have a filter at controller level this is a filter at controller level for the global level we have to go here to the solution explorer under configuration my configuration and i have these register config k okay, and here i just uncomment config dot filters and we add a new my action filter to filter at global level now let's see these working we run these we go to postman and we send our request we get the result here we go here to visual studio output window and we have three things here filter at global level before execution of get to filter at controller level before execution of get to and filter to before execution of get to and then inside action methods get to and then we have the reversed order notice 
one thing here the global level is the first one the controller level is the second one and the action method level is the third one okay this is the order now let's see another thing we have in the previous video at media type formatters controller we have these we have this formatter get formatters this doesn't have any filter okay so if we go here postman and send a request we get here the result and if we go to the visual studio and output we have here filter at global level before execution of get formatters and filter at global level after execution of get formatters Okay, so what we just saw at global level, we have to go to my configuration and inside the register, we have to add our filter to the config.filters. Okay, to the controller level, we have to add the attribute to the controller and the action level is what we just did in the entire video. The next part and the final is the disable filters. We can disable filters apply to the controller and global levels. Okay. And we do that by adding the attribute override action filters to the action method. This my action filter too is not disabled. Okay. Because we just disable the filters from the controller and the global levels. Okay. This will override all action filters and this is important that implements I action filter, the ones that implements I action filters at higher level at controller or global level okay the disadvantage of this is we cannot disable a specific filter because we just disable i action filters okay this is the end and as always thank you for watching